Welcome again to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom. And, well, my girlfriend's not here. She's at work. Um, this is going to be a fairly quick review of SmackDown. It was it was overall an entertaining show. Um, there might be spoilers up about it because it came from jolly old England in the O2 Center. She was a lot bigger. Than it is for other times. I don't know if there was multiple O2 centers or if they just like not show things. Like I know Amway Center sometimes covers up the really top rows. They don't sell out. I think other stadiums do that too. Um, big news: August seventh, SmackDown is coming back to the Amway Center. Yes, 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 yes. Hopefully, I get to go see it. Um. Well, let's talk a little bit about SmackDown. I'll, again, I'll, I'll try and make this fairly quick. Um, to, to open it was Kurt Angle and Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns says, don't, don't worry, Kurt. I'll take care of stuff. Beats up Jinder Mahal. It's <laughs> just entertaining. You see Mahal in the back ending his rib tape. So, again, kind of classic rib tape stuff. Um... From there, you have a Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens, and this was a really good match. This was actually a surf and surf match. I mean, the only thing I can say is that the crowd reacts just to the action. Normally, normally the crowd sings along a lot, and that didn't happen until later on in the show. But again, it, it was good. It was entertaining. Good, hard hitting wrestling moves. I mean, it just wasn't strikes and punches. There was the Falcon's arrow on the apron. And Kevin Owens, a fisherman suplex from the top rope. I mean, it wasn't a brain buster. It wasn't a fisherman buster, but it was pretty good, though. It was a spike DDT by Kevin Owens. I mean, again, the, the fisherman suplex on the top rope is a, a new move. Well, at least in WWE. But, again, it was, it was pretty good. Um, Seth Rollins won with a, a stomp out of nowhere. Again, good and turf match. One day I need a little lobster. Going across the top of the screen one day. <laughs> and the, the, this is a hobo production. From there, it showed a little bit of the press conference. It was okay. It was like a reverse New Japan Pro Wrestling where the champion made the challenge and, instead of the challenger. So Nia Jax actually challenged Ronda Rousey to a match for her. For, for well, yeah, Nia Jax was... Women's Championship at Money in the Bank. I mean, Kurt still has Kurt has the most expressive face ever. You can always tell when he looks upset. <laughs> the, the B team came in. He's just like, "What are you talking about? We already there's already the A team." So oh, we're the B team, and it was funny. Again, he just has the best reactions. He looks like he's enjoying himself. This led to a qualifying Money in the Bank match. It was a three-way between No Way, Jose, Baron Corbin, and Bobby Roode. And for the most part, it was a cheeseburger match. I think the Congo line looks like NXT trainees or probably just local enhancement talent. I, I, I don't think they would pull people from the crowd. I think once at a Chikara... A pro wrestling gorilla match. I think they had like volunteers that wanted to get DDT'd by Jake the Snake Roberts, just kind of running the ring and he just gave out a DDT test. I, I know in that video it was funny because you, you, you knew they weren't pro wrestlers because they're like, if you're DDT'd, stay down. And yeah, it was okay. Uh, no way, Jose. He didn't get in the match like halfway through it. And it was, it was a cheeseburger match. Is what it was. Bobby Roode won. <laughs> it was more so Booker T and Corey Graves trying to get each other to laugh. The crowd was just singing. I think they, they were bored for a little bit and like English soccer crowds, they just sing. No idea what they were singing. Again, more... Previews to Money in the Bank. This just seems like a really long wait time until, ne until the next pay-per-view. 
because it's just a really big build up and sort of stretching stuff out. Then we had Rizango versus the B team. <laughs> I hate to say it. This was a ham sandwich. It was okay. It was nothing special. Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas actually won. The crowd was singing to something. I know they started to sing the, the Fandango. Da -da, da -da 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 -da. Oh, however his song goes. That's the I Love Genie song. But <laughs> Booker T had the line, line of the night. I love it when a plan comes together. That was really the highlight of the match. The B team won Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas' first win. Since before they were members of the show Social Outcast. Wow, that's a while ago. There, and this is where I kind of jumbled up my notes a little bit. You had another woman's... Oh, and you had the women's... Th <laughs> six six women tag match. Sasha Banks, she was wearing her Wonder Woman's outfit. And, and she must wax down there. Again... There are good things about not having your girlfriend around. It's really low cut. Ooh la la. She waxes. Natalia and Ember Moon versus the Rise Squad. <laughs> and again, no girlfriend. Ruby Rye kind of showed part of her reverse tramp stamp. Whoa. Um, then you can see the little scar on Liv's legs from when she cut herself. And I think the only reason I know is I watched there was a WWE video about when she was cutting her clothes. To, I don't know why she was cutting her own clothes. They they that for her. Cut it. She had to get like stitches in the leg. And, and I've had so many scars on my legs that I haven't gotten stitches for. Again, I'm a hobo though. <laughs> the other thing Liv looked like she drank like bubblegum soda. She's like a bright blue tongue. She she looks like she ate some cartoon character from Rainbow Bite or something. Again, it shows my age. Well, Bank Natalia and Ember Moon won. Liv tapped out to the sharpshooter. Yeah, this was another ham sandwich match. It was okay. I don't know what purpose it served. I mean, at least they're all on TV. Probably it. And this is kind of like, like the one slice of ham, one slice of cheese, two slice of bread ham sandwich, too. It's just above to Just above a can of soup. Then you had... Yeah, let's see here. This is one of my notes kind of go out of order. Because, yes, I do actually have notes. So you have Drew and Dolph. So you have Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler versus Finn Balor and, and Braun Strowman. Oh wait, that wasn't next. Now whatever it was, whatever the order was, this was actually a really good, fun surf and turf match. <laughs> Although, again, I would like to see only because only because it was the England crowd. It would have been neat to see Finn Balor come out in his Jack the Ripper outfit. And that might be like the, the, a small critique, but it's just one of those little things. Um, Drew got an uh, okay pop. Finn Balor got a bigger pop. I figured Drew McIntyre would get a bigger pop. Never know. I mean, they were in the in, they were in the O2 Center, which is I want to say in London. McIntyre's in Scotland, England, London, London, England, or England, Scotland, the I don't know. <laughs> first tag in the match. Well, to begin with, he's a Braun Strowman versus Drew, Drew McIntyre. Eventually, he, he did the heel thing, tag out to Dolph. Uh, quick tags, Finn Bloor got back. In. And then went to commercial. And, and again, commercials just kill the TV product. <laughs> but Braun just used <laughs> Finn as a weapon. He, he he body slammed Dolph Ziggler and then body slammed Finn Balor onto Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> After that happened, Finn just started him like, like, what? Why? He's like, he's like, he got these hands. 
he's and Finn's like, okay. Like, we got him, didn't we? I was just, it was, it was, it was entertaining. Again, you just, you just have Braun running over people, tackles people. <laughs> he tackled, he tackled McIntyre, <laughs> just ran him over with a shoulder tackle, threw him flying right back and broke his trophy in half. Oh, yeah, that's right, because I think before this, was the re- was was a tag match? It was the revival. We got jobber entrances versus the Woken One, or oh, the Woken Eater of Worlds. Of Woken, yes, wonderful. Matt Hardy, of course, the 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 Waker of Worlds. Bray Wyatt. This is a cheeseburger match. I mean, the revival. Unfortunately, they got the jobber entrance. They're going to be in the, that club role where they're jobbing to other other more dominant teams, I guess. Again, the revival. They're a great tag team. Great tag team moves. Um, again, the fun thing about this, Matt Hardy is just so entertaining. You can probably see this whole smile on my face. And he's like, "That was a wonderful feat of, of athleticism." Wonderful! It was just fun. Yeah, Matt Hardy just brings a certain energy to it. And I think Bray Wyatt's enjoying himself now. It's just entertaining. <laughs> the, the, the crowd. The crowd, for some of these matches, seemed like they were bored because they would just sing. Um, the crowd did get behind, of course, Matt Hardy, who, who can't do... Delete! Delete! Delete, delete, delete. And again, it was it was fun. This led to a three wo- three woman tag match. Where where's oh in the previous match? Yeah, this is what I yeah with um, the the six woman tag match. Bank Natalia and Ember Moon. I have notes so I can actually look back and read this. Because if not, I want to miss this versus a ride squad. <laughs> Booker should never use the word threesome when <laughs> describing them. It's just funny. I have a dirty mind. Especially when my, my, my better half is not here with me to, to keep me in check. So then this led to a um, Bailey versus Alexa Bliss versus Mickey James three way qualifying match. I guess this was a cheeseburger match. Um, I still think Bailey's gonna go heel only because she's wearing the black wrist tape. Maybe I'm just old fashioned because I know the old the old way was if you were a face you wore white, if you were a heel you wore black. It started off really with Bliss and James on the same page. I mean, good double team move, two of them. Bailey would try something, and they, the both of them would counter at the same time. You have again. There was an argument between Bliss and James, and Bailey tried to insert herself in it, and, and, and the two of them just just kicked her at the same time. So it was good. Bliss's boobies look bigger. I know. I think there was a rumor that she was getting breast augmentation. Again, just a rumor. Reporting anything, but again, something looks a little bit off. Is that or I know the TV does weird things too. And that's just seeing things things live, and then and, and you're like, wait a second, TV. It's like, no. Like again, I think that the two biggest examples, Nikki Cross looks a lot taller on TV, and you see her in real life, she's like four foot eight or four foot nine, if that. Billy Kay's boobies seem bigger on TV too, because I saw her in real life, I'm like. Nah, but Zane, uh, Sammy Zane come out. The crowd started chanting. He was like, "Stop chanting for me!" Um, Sammy's Sammy's sick note. Sick note from a doctor saying why you can't wrestle. Sammy sick note. And he did the yep chant, and he just runs down Bobby Lashley. It was okay. Then just. The commercials, I think, just kills it. 
and and I don't know how the live audience sits through sits through all the recaps because it's one thing on TV when you you might have missed something. Another thing to be there live and all of a sudden you're taking like five minutes, five ten minutes between matches for commercials. It was like that in SmackDown. I think I think that's when I ate. That was, that was like the bathroom break or something. Popcorn break. Yes, popcorn is wonderful. And this then led to the main event, where because Jinder could not qualify, it was now Bobby Lashley versus Elias versus KO. The crowd loves Elias. And Elias actually tried to suck up to the crowd, which is kind of cool. Um, again, it was just Elias, KO. They tried to double team a lot on Lashley. It was just just really fun. KO interrupted Elias's promo. Again, did a lot. <laughs> Kevin Owens is one of the greatest tra- ring ring trash talkers ever. You're just talking to lies. No one wants to hear you sing. <laughs> You're chanting Bobby's sisters. How does booing Bobby Lashley? That was a shock. <laughs> Elias tried to perform in the middle of the match. The crowd loved it. Like, oh, walk with Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. That's a Seven Nation Army. Let him sing. Let him sing. I think by, by this point, I don't know what the time difference is, but the crowd was really kind of building and getting back into it. Which made it more fun at home. And then you have the yay boo chance. This is fun. Sami Zayn gets involved. Based on Bobby Lashley, there's a new feud. Sami Zayn, Bobby Lashley is going to be happening soon. And again, this was really a surf and surf match. It was good. Kevin Owens won. Kevin Owens is going to the Money in the Bank. That should be interesting. Again, I would like to thank everyone for watching. My name is Hobo Tom. Sometime, hopefully, towards the end of June. Southern Pro Lucha Libre is coming to town. New Japan Pro Wrestling's coming to town. A whole bunch of good wrestling events. Hopefully next week I get to go to one, if not two. Well, hope, well, one for sure on the 26th. NXT is coming to Tampa, and on the 31st are coming to Orlando. End of June you have Southern Pro Lucha Libre. The 29th of June, New Japan Pro Wrestling's coming to town. July something, I think it's Raw, is coming to Tampa. And then August, I did write this down. Where did I put it now? Everyone, you take notes. Ah, there we go. August 7th. SmackDown is coming back to Orlando. Yes, 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 yes. Um, if I don't get to the NXT event, I will post up previous previous NXT event I saved on my cell phone because my camera wasn't working right or I didn't have my or it wasn't charged up or the, the little flash card ran out of space or I need to get a flash card and I definitely want to download the Red Vol stuff on my cell phone from the NXT event last Christmas I, Christmas-ish I think when I took my nephews there again more content for you guys Please like and subscribe, leave a comment, or even leave an email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com, and I will only get to see my reviews Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, for SmackDown, because who needs Raw? A bad imitation of the miss. It's time to go hoboing. Bye.